Welcome to another interview from the Landrock blog. My name is Josh Sapienza, and I'm here with Kelly Jones of Trust Three Hospitality at Philadelphia's first National Independent Lodging Congress at the Rittenhouse Hotel. Mr. Jones is the founding partner of Trust Three Hospitality and Lili Hospitality. His ventures include managing partner of XVI and Jaybird in New York City. He's relaunched the Malibu Inn on Malibu Beach, California in association with Top Chef Angelo Sosa. He's also partnered with uh, Chef Jeffrey Zakarian at the Tudor House and High Bar on Miami South Beach. He's the creator of Sweet and Tender at the Say Hotel in San Diego and Eden on Miami South Beach. Jones has been on the opening executive teams of some of the country's leading hotel brands, including the Monaco, Washington, D.C., Hudson in New York, Cliffs, San Francisco, the Argonaut in San Francisco, and Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. At this conference, we've been discussing the relationship between restaurant concepts and independent hotels. So when it comes to developing a restaurant and a hotel, what really makes independent hotels uh, different from large chains? Um, attention to detail. Um, uh, Certainly, independent hotels are um, better for me as a restaurant operator because I would typically do all the food and beverage within the hotel. I would do the restaurant, uh, three meal period, a fine dining restaurant if they had the space, uh, banquet catering, room service, and even mini bars in some cases. Um, a larger hotel, typically, uh, they're um, keeping all of those, uh, other than the restaurant, all of those profit centers for themselves. And as we know, banquet and catering in a hotel is, is a very profitable entity. Sure. Uh, now, you work in a very collaborative industry. What are two of the biggest challenges that come with opening a restaurant within the context of a hotel, whether it's within the footprint or if it's just on sharing the property on the, on the ground somewhere? Well, certainly two things. Uh, the first is cost sharing. You have to be very careful and negotiate that all out right up front, whether it's wine glasses, water glasses, because the last thing you want to do is stop a guest from leaving your restaurant, going up to their room with the glass because it's, you know, it's yours. So you have to um, have all those conversations up front on what the ongoing operations cost sharing structure is going to look like for um, small wares, OS and E. And then also space configuration, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, you've got uh, your operation set up for success, whether it's, you know, where the bar is, how the bar is, um, where the entrance to the restaurant is, uh, as opposed to where the entrance to the restaurant is from the hotel, um, because typically you want those co-joined. Um, the back of the house space, certainly, how the kitchen's set up, room service, staging area, delivery, uh, liquor rooms, walk-ins, because you need to keep those all separate and, and uh, secured. Um, because in a hotel, you have a lot of staff, so you need to make sure everything's set up so you can secure everything. Do you find that if you're growing uh, beyond expectation, uh, the, the fish tank is only so big, and how do you handle uh, those situations where you need room for storage or you need room for more human capital or, or anything? Well, I mean, there's, you know, the, the physical plant is typically the physical plant unless you can build off on it somewhere, which isn't typically the case. But, um, you know, when you're collaborating with the hotel operator, um, you know, typically who, he who is doing the business gets the room. Good point. Uh, now, how are changing demographics and new trends affecting your work and the concepts that you're creating? Uh, well, as I said in the discussion, you know, any good operator is a student of their craft. So you're always, um, you know, reading whatever's, you know, new and, and interesting coming out, whether it's food and beverage trends. Uh, and me, I just, you know, I'm blessed because my favorite thing in the world is a great meal with a great bottle of wine with great friends. I got to parlay that into a career. So I'm always going out to see what other people are doing. And how would you answer what is, I would imagine, the biggest concern and often a valid fear of what happens when uh, the trends change and you're not able to keep on top of them? Um, boy, I hope that never happens. I'd never contemplated something like that. Um, I, I do travel quite often, so I'm always getting new ideas every time I go out um, on the road, whether it's, you know, in, in an airport even getting ideas on operations. Um, you know, when it gets to a point where, you know, you're struggling financially and you can't get out, that's typically when it's time to get out. Gotcha. Well, thanks very much, Kelly. I hope no one has to see you ever go out. <laughs> we're, sorry, we're sorry to see you leave today. Well, thanks, thanks for, for joining having us. Me.